23 Mazda CX-50 is just that. It's all new to the Mazda SUV lineup. It's also purposely built for the North American market, and it's the first collaboration between Toyota and Mazda through their Alabama USA plant. <laughs> but before I give you the inside scoop of this all new vehicle, here's what makes the CX-50 different from the other compact SUVs in the lineup. Mazda markets the CX-50 as more of a rugged, capable, adventure-ready SUV than the CX-30 or CX-5. It's offered in both front-wheel drive and all-wheel drive versions. However, in Canada, Mazda's iActive all-wheel drive technology and new Mazda Intelligent Drive Select Mode feature is standard and helps to elevate the CX-50's off-road and towing capabilities. You just heard me say that in Canada, we received the Sky Active all-wheel drive version of the CX-50 as a standard. But to be more specific this week, I'm reviewing the GT trim, which is the most popular in Canada and the US. But I also have the optional turbo engine. And with a 93 octane, this is producing 256 horsepower with 320 pound-feet of torque. 2023 Mazda CX-50 GT equipped with the optional Skyactiv G 2.5 liter four cylinder turbo engine, six speed automatic transmission, sport mode activated, paddle shifters ready, let's go. Oh yeah. The GT trim with turbo engine also offers more style, convenience, luxury, and driver-assisted technology. That said, Mazda includes LED lights all around with both the front and rear bumpers receiving black and silver accenting. A blacked out badge is included on the rear. The exhaust tips are wider. The wheels are massive at 20 inches. The interior is luxe with loads of convenience and there's ample amounts of driver assistive technology available through Mazda's iActive Sense safety technology system. Navigation with Mazda Radar Adaptive Cruise Control is standard in addition to forward and rear smart brake support to assist with avoiding collisions before they happen. A heads up display can be activated or deactivated to your choosing. Blind spot monitoring with lane keep and lane departure warning assist, a rear view camera with guidelines and 360 camera views are again, all standard. And just a few of the everyday driver assisted technology features you could take advantage of in your CX-50. Whether you choose to purchase the GT trim or the upgraded GT trim with turbo engine like I have, you'll receive leather seats throughout. These front seats are also power operated. They're heated and ventilated and the steering wheel is heated as well. To turn on the heating or the ventilation for your seats or your steering wheel, just use the buttons located up here. This is a first for Mazda, this panoramic power operated sunroof and it looks amazing. It really brightens up the whole cabin area, so well done. As for connectivity, the 10.25 inch full color display is standard along with Mazda's Connected Services mobile app, which allows you to start your vehicle and lock, unlock the doors remotely. I've already mentioned navigation is standard, but so is wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay and mobile charging. Additional connectivity is available in the form of one 12 volt port, which you'll find underneath your climate panel, and two USB ports, which you'll find inside the front center console. But back to this infotainment system. So first of all, it's not a touch screen. Okay, you have to use this dial knob, really easy to do. I strongly encourage you to sit down with your Mazda specialist and go through the settings icon because that's where you'll be able to customize all your driver assisted technology and there's a lot to go through. Also, I don't prefer having a heads up display when the screens are so large. So if you don't like that either, just deactivate it. As for shortcuts, okay, beside the driver's leg, you'll be able to monitor your vehicle. You'll also have a shortcut so you can view your 360 degree camera and your parking guidelines. And you could also open up your power lift gate. And speaking about that cargo area, 
If you have an active family or if you just need to tow, the GT trim with turbo engine instead of the base engine offers more towing capabilities at 3,500 pounds. Payload capacity is 850 pounds and this weight includes what you can store on top and inside with passengers. Roof rails and a power liftgate are standard and to adjust the height of your liftgate door, hold it in your desired position, press and hold the button and then wait for the beeps. Lifting items into your CX-50 is made easier by the lower place bumper position and overall cargo capacity with the seats folded in their 60-40 split configuration is just shy of 1,600 pounds or 56.3 cubic feet to be exact. A cargo cover is offered along with a durable floor liner and if you require a bit more space you'll find it under the floor trunk where you'll also find your temporary spare tire. Two competitors you might want to consider is the Kia Sportage and the Toyota RAV4. If you look down in the description below, I'll provide you with side-by-side -side comparisons in terms of cargo capacity. Now, in terms of overall storage within the cabin, it's actually impressive for such a compact vehicle. So up front on these sides of the doors, more than enough space for items there. And then even back here, more than enough space for snacks and bottles. And when no one is sitting in the middle, you could take advantage of your two traditional cup and bottle holders. Now these seats are fixed, meaning they don't move forwards and backwards, but they do fold and these exterior positions are heated. To turn on the heating for your seats, those buttons are located just below the vents. Now back to that storage for a second, you're only provided one small pocket behind the front seat passenger. And for overall space, well, if you're familiar with my channel, you know I'm only five foot three, so I never complain about leg and head space, but if you're traveling with taller guests, it could get a little bit tight. Then connectivity, pretty decent. You're provided two USB ports. 2023 Mazda CX-50 final impressions and well done Mazda. First from an exterior standpoint, I really like on the GT model that everything's blacked out, all those blacked out accents. It just helps to elevate just that little bit, but the 20 inch wheels are amazing. But 20 inch wheels adds to a bit rougher ride. So you can definitely feel all those bumps and cracks. Um, for noise quality, I can't give you a fair opinion on that because I have winter tires on and winter tires are always louder. Um, but the overall comfort is just really good. And the first time just getting into the CX-50, I thought I was getting into a premium luxury vehicle because the stitching, the leather, everything is really, really well done. Now for this infotainment system, personally, I am usually not a fan of any dial knobs or touch pads or anything. I just like a touch screen because, you know, I want everything instant, super fast, right? But this is so easy to use. And I, again, highly encourage you to speak to your Mazda specialist about setting up your driver assistive technology because there's so much to go through. It really is impressive that this isn't competing against the Mercedes and the BMWs. Like it's really, really well done. For visibility, good out the front, even with the infotainment system protruding, um, my line of sight is still really good. Fine for making a left-hand turn even the a pillar is a little bit wider but there's a large gap in between the a pillar and the side mirror so it's fine out the sides you're fine as well and there is no blind spot uh, blind spot out that third window because it's huge and remember you have blind spot monitoring if you don't like the beeping well you can turn it into a vibration instead it's I mean hands down well done um, comfortable you know rear seat gas heated seats like this is great like again you expect features like that from a premium luxury vehicle I can't believe it's standard in this but um, what I like to do in all my videos is recommend a test drive because those are complimentary you have to look down in the description below because I provide you with competitive comparisons I give you all the links I try to make it easier and I give you my real-world 
fuel mileage stats because this was the first time I was trying the cylinder deactivation and it really just comes down to throttle modulation and it, you can really benefit from that technology if you use your adaptive cruise control or just cruise control in general. But guys, I'm Juliana, your automotive woman, and while you're down there, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell and connect with me on social media so you don't miss any behind the scenes action. Thanks for watching, guys.